everybody and welcome to the 2018 LA Auto Show. My name is Jody and this is Craig Cole. I, am I? I think so. Where am I? Who took my pants? Well, Craig is fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you all for tuning in. If you are watching this on Facebook, please send us your questions. We're keeping track on our devices here and we love answering your questions. So make sure to get them in. And if you're watching it on YouTube, maybe just leave your questions in the comments and we'll get to them later. Um, for, for now, Craig, what do you think of the show so far? It's a, a lot of great reveals, I think. I mean, today is super dead. It's the second press day. Really, everything was revealed yesterday and probably the night before. Yeah, that's right. But today, it's almost like a ghost town, which is a good thing because it gives us much better access to everything yeah. we didn't have a chance to shoot yesterday. Exactly, and I think it was a really busy show. Like, there was a lot of interesting, relevant products that mm -hmm. uh, real people can actually buy. So, you know, the last time we did one of these, we were in Paris, and it was just a lot of you know, exotic stuff, yeah. a lot of sports yeah. car stuff, but there's a lot of relevant products we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and let's kind of walk over to one of the biggest reveals of the show, and maybe one of the most highly anticipated, perhaps. I would say so. I mean, are you getting a hint of what booth we're at, by chance? <laughs> I'll give you one I can't guess. tell. <laughs> hmm. So what vehicle are we gonna check out? We were looking at this yellow one earlier. Yes, so this is the all new eighth generation Porsche 911. That's 993 generation, correct? Exactly. And yeah. so, although it might not look like it right away, it is a completely new model. And I'll kind of point out some of the, the changes that they made here. So one of the biggest uh, exterior changes is that the hood has this new crease which kind of pays homage to um, the older ones. And if you, if you just swoop over here, I'll show you the inspiration on this older model here. The classic. Right over here, you can see that this hood line was kind of copied by the designers for this all new generation you can, model. But you can barely tell. It's, a, it's, it's all like, the little details. Yeah. Like with the 911, you can't go too crazy with design because no. you would screw up People an icon, right? People expect a 911 exactly. to look like a 911. Exactly. So if you come swoop around here, I'll show you the other important changes. So the door handles now sit flush. Well, they're they're kind of popped out now, but. Normally they'll sit flush with the door and they'll pop out automatically when you need to use them. So that's an all new feature. Another interesting feature that is new to the 911 is the tail lights, which are now connected by this uh, singular light bar here. And uh, they also have an interesting new font for 911, which is that. also a throwback to the older models. Now, Jody, maybe you can answer this question. Are they mounting the engine in the back now? <laughs> is that a new feature? I feel like, you know, that might be a new for this year thing. Okay, They've well, never done it before. Well, uh, maybe, I mean, it's they're always advancing technology, right? So, exactly. rear mounted engine, so novelty. I also wanted to show you something else. Maybe this one has it. What are you looking for, Jodes? What are you looking for? We're going to go over here. I'm sorry. We're going to go over here for a little bit. So something that's new to the 911 is you'll notice it has a big old sensor here now. And for the first time ever, it gets stuff like adaptive cruise control and all those driver assistance that, you know, so far we haven't seen in Porsche sports cars. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. Yeah. What about numbers? We got 443 horsepower, turbocharged, Flat six, of course. In um, well, in the back. In the back. In the there. back. Let's say in the back. <laughs> so also eight-speed PDK automatic, dual clutch automatic for now. For but now. I, the way I, what I understand is they're not mentioning the manual yet, but you've got to have a manual. They in will eventually have uh, 911s that are manual. These ones are the four S and the S that debuted here. <clears> when mm -hmm. the regular Carrera debuts, I'm sure it'll come with a manual. What about touchscreen inside? 10.9 inch, new center console design. Yep, and so pricing up by $8,000, oh, because why not? It got so much more expensive. <laughs> but you know what's crazy about that is that at this point, Porsche can just charge yeah, exactly. whatever they want and people are going to buy it anyway. So Make I think it, it was rain. exactly. So I think it was kind of a smart move for them to increase pricing this much. You know, and by doing that, it just, you know, makes it a little bit more exclusive. Exactly. So I think they did a good job. We've got a couple comments here. Uh, 
Yes. Frequent viewer Emmanuel Lefavuza says hello, guys. So hello. hello. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. Also, Ray Mitro wants to see the Chevrolet Blazer and, of course, the Lincoln Aviator. I know okay. we definitely have the Aviator on our list. We can stop by those later. And I'm sure we can swing by the Chevy display okay. a little bit later. So, yeah. That's uh, what else have we got? Automatic, em okay, you mentioned the sensor for the automatic emergency braking and all those yeah. fancy features drivers expect these days. Yeah, so other cool days. things it has is stuff like night vision assist with like infrared I imaging. I never use that. I don't usually use it either, but it's a handy feature to have. Uh, it just gives a bit more confidence for when you're driving around at night. You I know? think in the city it might be more useful than out in the country at a slower Probably, speed. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, it also has uh, interesting connectivity features that use Ooh. kind of swarm intelligence. Mm. Ooh, there's a pupper we over there. We got to say hello to the yellow lab over there, the security dog. To well, we're going to swing by and just check out for any. Um, Bleps or blems. Okay. <laughs> bork, bork. <laughs> bork, bork. Um, uh, so do we have any more questions about the 911? Not right now, but I was just going to say, if anyone that is viewing, if you do have questions or comments, post them in the chat. I'm doing my best to monitor right now, monitor live. Um, it all depends on connectivity, of course. You never know on the show floor. But get those questions in. We'll do our best to answer. And um, I think we're just about done with the, uh, okay, the 911. Okay, let's go see what so else is around. Next on the list is Honda. We're gonna go to the Honda booth for the passport. Say hello to the pupper, he's going away now. Oh. But um, yeah, so Porsche always does, here at the LA show, they oh, have their own quick, separate quick, enclave. Quick 911 question. Oh. Are the gauges digital in the 911? Uh, yes, they are. So it actually comes with the new digital Probably dashboard. Probably need to repeat my question. Oh, okay. So the question was if the gauges in the new 911 are digital, and the answer is yes, they are. So there is it's highly configurable, mm -hmm. of course. So depending on whether you're in like a sport mode or regular mode, uh, it, it changes the type of information mm -hmm. that's in front of you, and it's highly configurable. Which we're seeing in everything. It's these slowly days, rolling right? out to absolutely everything. <laughs> And Porsche, um, as traditional as they are with the 911, they're they yeah. kind of forced to do that. So for this new 911, the they new really model. wanted to just modernize the tech. And so, you know, um, engineering-wise, it's, it's not a huge leap forward, but it does have a lot more tech. And so we're entering a new hall right now, and uh, we're going to take a look here at the all-new Honda Passport which is a new model that we've never seen before. And it's a crossover that slots in between the Honda CRV and the bigger Pilot. No, no internet. Do, do, do. <laughs> so if you look right over here, we have a couple of examples. And so a lot of people have said that it looks like, uh, like a two row Pilot, basically mm -hmm. a Pilot without the third row. Definitely truncated a little bit. You can see that it's slightly shorter overall. Yeah, and the design is a little bit more rugged, I think, than the CRV and the Pilot. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, it was designed in the US and it will be built in Alabama. Nice. So it has seating for five. It gets a standard three and a half liter V6 engine with 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. And that engine can be paired with a nine speed automatic transmission. Of course, like Honda sensing will be standard, and that's just Honda's kind of full suite of driver mm -hmm. assistance and safety tech. Did you mention the torque vectoring all-wheel drive I yet? did not. Tell them well, about it. The system can send up to 70% of engine torque to the rear axle, and 100% of that 70% can go to either the left wheel or the right wheel at gotcha, the back axle gotcha. for obviously helping the car rotate a little bit cool. while it's going through turns. Pretty nifty. Pretty nifty. It's also got a couple of unique driving modes. So there's snow, sand, and mud. Oh, we got a question from uh, Samai Hajasasad. Semi? Semi Sammy Hajasad. Yes, the Samster Samster's is asking, watching. what's with the tiny wheels on the passport? <laughs> That's a good, well, did they lift the body a little bit? So, so maybe they're not so small, they just might look a So a lot smaller. of the feedback that Honda has gotten so far is that the Passport is under wheeled. Like they really expected them to put uh, chunkier off-road tires mm -hmm. on them. Maybe make it a little bit look a cooler, maybe. Um, the other, what's another like standout feature for the Passport? The thing is, okay, yeah, I know. So the thing about this car is that it doesn't really push the boundaries of like tech or it's, features. I don't get it, honestly, because what is it doing that a standard pilot doesn't do? I it's just it's, slightly smaller, I right? think it's because people have been asking for an in-betweener model like this for to a long time. To fill this tiny little space? Yeah. I, 
I don't know. Like they want a pilot, but maybe they want a more affordable version of a pilot and they don't need, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I want to show you know. the trunk because oh. that is uh, you one are of the a biggest. You are a certified storage space aficionado, Jodes. So how much cargo capacity have we got in here, Craig? All right, well, it's 41.2 cubic feet as it is configured, but if you tip those seats down, which you can do with the push of a button, oh my goodness, you get nearly 80 cubes. And, and this is really cool. This is another two and a half cubic feet of just under floor storage, you know, in case you have something dirty in there that you need to store um, or just keep hidden, you know, so people don't steal it. Honda, they are masters of st efficient engineering. I don't think any other automaker can build a vehicle that has as much interior storage for the outside yeah. size of the vehicle, you know? Yeah. They're and if absolute you, masters if of you that. If you look inside, there is a ton of storage cubbies, and that's something Honda does really, really well because they know that, you know, families use these cars and they just mm -hmm. want a lot of stuff to, or a lot of places to put all their stuff. They also uh, made a point of mentioning a physical volume knob. Well, that's something we've complained about forever. <laughs> I know, and so they made a, they made a really big deal about that. Um, yeah, so in general, like, we didn't think this was a hugely, you know, remarkable product, but they will sell a ton of them. Yes. What kind of ton? A butt ton. <laughs> As you said in your video. And I think Jesse David Grant in the comments, or Granat, summed it up best. Wow, what a boring interior. <laughs> I hate to say that, but... It's kind of true. Like this, my issue with this car is that it just doesn't push the boundaries yeah. of, you know, what we expect from Honda. Like I'm sure it will drive amazingly. Oh yeah. I'm sure it will the be. The function is there. The, the function is there, but it just features. doesn't. Features. It just doesn't yeah. raise the bar for this segment, you know? Like yeah. the Accord did for its Absolutely. segment. It was fantastic and it won all sorts of awards. Um, and I'm not sure this Passport is going to do that for the segment, you know? We've got another question. Any pricing on this? I don't think there is. I don't think there's pricing yet. Pricing will be released closer to when it's on sale at dealers and that mm -hmm. won't be until sometime next year hmm. yeah do we have any other questions is there a new honda fit there steve randall wants to know not a new honda fit no, no nothing on the fit front although interesting news the hrv just got a turbocharged engine okay. in europe oh. and so we're not 100 percent sure if north it's america is going to get it but it has to like we're there, be there it. won't be a re there isn't a reason why it shouldn't get that turbo engine because the hrv is so if <laughs> All right, so we talked about essentially a, pilot, a Honda Pilot that's been tweaked a little bit to yes. make a new model. Yep. Let's let's go to the next vehicle on our list, something completely out of left field. This okay. is a new, what, electric pickup truck Ooh. and, and uh, utility vehicle, the yes. Rivian. Yes. Sounds where's, like a Game of Thrones booth? or... I know it it's a here? small booth, but maybe we can... We're walking past the Nissan booth. They had two refreshed vehicles. Nothing big there. Updated Maxima uh, and updated Murano crossover. So yeah. those two products, uh, basically facelifts and some minor chassis tweaks. Hello, Mr. Miles. So um, here we are. What we're Rivian. seeing now is Rivian. And so this automaker kind of just came out of nowhere on this LA Auto Show and kind of surprised everyone with two models that look pretty much ready for production um, yes. and they're a Detroit based company I believe so the cars are made and designed and produced in America and they're all electric yes which I think is super super cool four electric motors one at each wheel you can get three different battery sizes with ranges between 240 and 400 miles and it can get so the fastest one so the one with the bigger battery can get to zero to 60 in three seconds shut up which is so fast. Shut up. Yeah, no, no, I won't shut up. No, well, you should. Yeah, you shut Do up. Do us all a favor, Joe. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the most powerful one has 750 horsepower and 826 pound-feet of torque, which is That's nuts. a lot of torque. And even That's... the entry-level one, the figure was like 400 and something pound-feet. That's the entry-level one, and that's enormous. We got another question unrelated to Rivian, but okay. uh, Russ Henry wants to know, did any automakers skip the LA show? That's a good question. I think everyone was here, even if they didn't debut something. I yeah. think all the major automakers were here. 
I can't think of any that. I don't know. McLaren wasn't here. I know like that. Aston Martin, maybe. Were maybe they here? some I didn't of the exotics them. weren't here. But I know yeah. this is a big market for them, so yeah. it's interesting that they're not here. I think uh, the the more high end automakers are represented by uh, dealer networks here. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, like the Galpin people and stuff like that. So yeah. they're, they're predicting a $65,000 price tag for this vehicle, uh, assuming uh, federal tax yeah, credits Yeah, so are let's included. go and take a look at the pickup but truck. So we just looked at the totally SUV. totally ready for production, doesn't it? I mean, well, it's they're actually planning to produce it for 2021, I think. Okay. And so it's like, it's just a fully, you know, Ooh. fleshed out product. Mm -hmm. And because it's electric, it has a lot of interesting storage solutions, like this giant frunk. Mm -hmm. um, and there's kind of um, a huge pass-through compartment in the back where As you, you could... can do with electric exactly, very easily, right? right? Um, and that's the thing. Like, electric is the best propulsion system, right? When you think about it, because there's no oil to change. Exactly. There's no valve. The, the parts count is extremely low compared to an engine where you've got a there's timing less chain. less moving parts. Exactly. And you get instant torque. It's quiet. There's no vibration. The only real problem is the battery. Right. Because they're big, they're heavy, and they often take a very long time to charge. That's true, but I think the charging big. technology is getting better and better and faster and faster, oh, right? Yeah. But um, uh, a lot of advantages to electric, even yeah. if we don't necessarily always love them. Yeah, so these two cars from Rivian were really impressive. And I feel like they kind of stole the show because they were such a big surprise. Mm -hmm. Like up until today and yesterday, nobody really knew about it. Mm -hmm. And they just showed up. I'd, I'd never heard of them before the show. Right. And I think it's, oh, you can see the little storage compartment here. I'll show you. So there's, a, there's an interesting pass through here. And that looks like a snowboard bag, so that's a massive uh, the thing extra that little carbon space. Like, typically, typically when you see a, a quote concept vehicle, yeah. it looks crazy, right? There's like just weird design elements, features that are obviously never going to come to market. Yeah, but this, this looks, looks ready to go. Yeah, and I love the interior too. The interior of this car and the SUV we saw over there are beautiful. Mm -hmm. We've got a question. Uh, Heidi Mari is asking about CX-5. We'll have to see if we can swing by there. We'll uh, definitely the Mazda stop booth by is the, in the Mazda other, booth later. In the West Hall, so yeah. that'll be a little bit later. We can take a look at that. What kind of tow numbers for the electric truck, if Joseph wants to know. Thing. And I don't know that they've announced anything about towing. I don't see that in our notes here. 11,000 11, 11, pounds? Okay, pounds. our representative Great. is Thank telling you so us 11,000. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and 7,000 for the SUV. So 11 for the truck, 7 for the SUV. Thank you. That's quite capable. That's yeah. What do you think of the designs, Craig? I love them. I oh, think they look so cool. Yeah, like I said, it looks ready for ready for production. I really love I how mean. they combine like the new and the retro. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. And of course, Americans love pickups and SUVs, so. I mean, it's smart to launch with something like that yes. in this market, right? Because that's what people want. Sammy wants to know who was the best dressed at the show. Colin's got a purple suit. Colin had a purple, purple suit. suit so although I'm I had give a it pink, I had a pink suit yesterday. <laughs> I call it the pink power suit. <laughs> You certainly did Some have a very... Some people didn't pink. like it. I thought it looked dope, but whatever. It looked... It was... Uh, yeah, it certainly was. It certainly was something. <laughs> uh, let's right. keep going here. Kia so, Soul is next, because that was all new as yes, well. Yes, a completely new Kia Soul. And uh, the Kia Soul has always been a really funky and fun car, and it really stood out for being different. And with this new generation model, they kind of continued to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, they've actually, since this is a new generation, they've replaced the hamsters. They're now going with gerbils <laughs> instead. <laughs> uh, so they came up with three distinct models. There is the EV model this X-Line model, which we're looking at now, and that's kind of the more rugged, crossover-y type, as you can see with the body cladding really? and stuff that's like that. That's a whole segment of vehicle I just don't get. What? We'll talk about that later. Okay. In a little bit. Like, finish <laughs> the third one. And then they came out with this yeah. GT-Line model, which is this red one, and that's kind of billed as their sportier one. Yeah. You know, where GT comes from, like Kia Stinger GT yes, has yes. kind of that DNA. Yeah. Um, but and so, very, ta very nice design. I love this back yeah. with the, the tail lights, Ben. If you can see the way they kind of wrap, kind of wrap around, around the top here of the hatch, I've not seen that before. It's an interesting I've, touch. Yeah, I've always enjoyed the design of the Soul, and with this new generation model, they've made it a lot more practical. So the trunk openings are bigger, the mm. door openings are bigger. And the vehicle is slightly larger, right, Jody? It yeah, does, it's a little tends bit to happen longer. with every. Yeah, it's reason. a little bit longer, so that means it gets more cargo space and more room for passengers. 
Uh, and since Ben's looking at the engine right now, I'll talk about that. Uh, there's two available. There's a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder with 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. And that one gets a six speed manual or a CVT. And then, if you want, you can upgrade to a 1.6 liter turbo four. You're gonna we, want the turbo. That's probably the one I You're would pick. It. Uh, it gets 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque, but you can only get it with a seven-speed DCT, mm. so you can't get it with a manual. Do do do. I know. And, uh, we got another question from uh, Emanuela. Uh, any all-wheel drive on the Soul? Uh, no, the Soul does not get all-wheel drive, and that was kind of a rumor that started. Um, and it seemed pretty legit. Like I thought, I actually thought the Soul would have gotten all-wheel drive, but not right now. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, though. Oh, very good question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this... one of the funny features of the Kia Soul is it has this new um, mood lighting system, <laughs> and you can choose different modes. Like romance is Ooh, one of the modes, Jody. and party time is one of the modes. And I have <laughs> for no distracted idea. driving with like strobe lights. I is just, that what they're I going have for? no idea what that would look like. <laughs> like I'm just picturing in romance mode, like you just activate it, and then Barry White just goes Soul. <laughs> I think that would be so funny. Maybe that's what it is. I hope, I hope so. Uh, it also has uh, ambient lighting that can sync to the beats on your stereo, which oh is my. an interesting touch. They've done that touch. before, I think. They, the, like yeah. the speakers would flash and stuff. Um, but you also get wireless charging, I'm assuming for your phone. Mm -hmm. Head up display, 10 and a half inch display screen, all the driver assistance features you might expect in a modern vehicle and a whole lot more. You can also connect two Bluetooth devices at the same time, and I don't really know why that, anyone would need to do that. Because it's twice as much as anybody else, right? <laughs> but I'm just not sure. Maybe you could like make calls from one phone and then play music from another, That's maybe? That's a good point, yeah. Or maybe two, well, yeah. I was thinking if, you know, a husband and wife owned a vehicle and whenever one of them was driving, you know. Right. But they would only be connected separately, right? Whoever was... Yeah. So, I, I don't, don't know. know. Very weird. Um, but the so GT this is, model, so yeah. this, this is like lifted? No, it just has like body cladding. Okay. So it's yeah. like a golf all track kind of thing. Pretty much, I yeah. don't get that whole segment. Mechanically, they're all the same. Okay. But it's just a little bit of body cladding um, and it gets like roof rails, which the other one doesn't get. Okay. The roof rails are nice. Yeah. But like... That segment of vehicle, I don't get, like, it's just, if you want a crossover, get a crossover. Don't, like, take a Focus Active or whatever they're going to make yeah. to, for the next-gen Focus to send to America. Like, I mean, why? Because people, <laughs> I, just... I don't know, because this will be less less expensive, because, and it's also not as big. Yeah. It's, it'll be more fuel-efficient because it's not all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Like, it does have, this segment does have its benefits, although I think it's a lot of just marketing, you know? Mm -hmm. And the Soul has always been a weird one because people don't know what it is. Like, is it a hatchback? Is it a crossover? We still don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joseph is asking if we've happened past the Hyundai booth yet. And no, we have not. But we, we will. We will be getting to the Palisade we a little bit later, later in the show. So stick and around. Though if you are just joining us, make sure you get your questions or comments posted up on the Facebook Live again. We'll do our best to answer those. If you're watching on YouTube, we obviously don't have a time machine, so we can't answer your questions. But we do appreciate you watching. <laughs> So uh, let's take a look at the Soul EV that also debuted here uh, at the LA Auto Show. So I don't think there has been range unveiled yet, but it does get an electric motor that has 201 horsepower and uh, we're one, no, 291 pound-feet of torque or something like that, which is it's a lot. lot. Of torque. Yeah. But very comparable horsepower to the, the turbo gas engine, so yeah. performance will be very good. And uh, you'll be able to use the regenerative braking through the paddle shifters, mm. and they have four levels of aggression depending it's on like whether you want. Hyundai Kona EV, right? Yeah, yeah. Hyundai so Kona is excellent. Yeah. yeah, you've driven it recently. I, well, the EV specifically. Yeah. yeah, I was very impressed. Fast, it'll roast the tires from the get go. If That's you, if so you take much the traction fun. Off. I really love that. But let's. Um, is that all our, about well, the? Do we have any questions about the Kia Soul? Um, I don't see it. Is there a, is the Telluride there, Sammy is yeah, asking? Yeah, the Telluride is here. Let's do a, a flyby there yeah, for Sammy. Yeah, so, so this is the Telluride here. Um, so y there's a whole bunch of extra accessories on here that won't make it to the production <laughs> what is model. This movement? What is this dance this move? This is just my, like, my Vanna accessories. White. Kind of thing. So, like, obviously, the production one won't get this ladder, um, and even the the rear-mounted spare tire. <laughs> so, this Telluride came out. Uh, it actually debuted at a fashion show in New York earlier this year. 
We have a question about the Ford Bronco. No, no debut yet. Not yet. But probably Detroit. Probably Detroit. I would guess Detroit. The so baby Bronco, maybe, or the big yeah. Bronco. Do we know? The O.J. Simpson Bronco, or like the Bronco Two. <laughs> like that's your, what they're building, right? I suppose, yeah. But um, we got another. Our, what? might be one of the most important products here is over at the Jeep booth. Ooh. I think I think I know what you're you, Yeah, you know let's what I'm go about. over there. It should be that way. Okay. I think it's that way. So let's go around let's the back of the Telluride maybe. And Ford booth over there. They didn't show anything, did they? They're Ford just... didn't have anything. Lincoln had something, but the, Ford didn't show anything at the LA Auto Show. But the folks at Jeep did. Yes. And, and Dodge um, had a crazy looking concept too. <laughs> we should definitely look at that yes. later. That made me laugh so much. So this is probably like maybe the most anticipated reveal of the entire show. Yeah, and maybe I would even say. of like the whole year. Or the last like 25 years. Yeah, like because... people ha are hyped up about this car. And it's not even a car. Okay, so we're at the Jeep booth now and we're here to see the all new Jeep Gladiator. They needed a Coliseum to introduce it, right? <laughs> so is. this is Jeep's all new Wrangler based pickup truck. People have been asking for this vehicle for a very, very long time. Yeah, it's basically a Wrangler with a pickup. So let's move on to the next booth then. <laughs> no. No. I kid, I kid. Well, pretty much everything you get on a regular Wrangler, you can get on the new Gladiator. And so what that means is that you'll get a ton of off-road capability. Oh, yeah. This um, thing will drive through two and a half feet of water. Yes. Um, you can also take blocks. off all the doors. You can take mm -hmm. off the roof. You can still fold down the windshield. Yeah. And they're saying it competes with, like, the Chevy Colorado and the, the soon to come out Ford truck. Ranger. Yeah. yeah. But it does so much more than those. Those are definitely, those are almost more lifestyle vehicles this compared to this because it's so hardcore. definitely more practical. Yeah. So I know a lot of Jeep owner, Wrangler owners who off-road a lot have to uh, trailer their stuff. Ah, and they're outdoor super hardcore goods. guys. Yeah, yeah, and so, you know, you can see at the back of this one, you can just put your dirt bikes on there. Yep. Um, okay. And you can just go places, which is what Jeep <laughs> is all about. So also, despite having crazy off-road capability, they're also touting this vehicle's um, hauling capability. So it should have best-in-class towing of 7,650 pounds, best-in-class hauling in the bed of 1,600 pounds. And the bed is worth mentioning. Yes, it's five feet long. It is. Five feet long, it's got tie-downs. You can get a weatherproof plug in the back and check this out. Hydraulic tailgate. Oh yeah, because everybody was wanting that. <laughs> Very important feature there. But you can also, of course, get the spray and bed liner. So this bed is going to look great for many years to come because you know you start using a truck as a truck should be used and the business end gets damaged exactly. and scuffed and dented. There's also a weatherproof plug back here. Oh, very nice, 115 really volts so you can plug your computer in or your electric razor or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what you people do your plugs and your jeeps yeah interestingly um, it doesn't have uh like a included spare wheel oh that's but, a good point uh, the interesting thing is that mopar is also offering they already have 200 different accessories you can buy for the gladiator i swear they must develop the accessories as the teams are developing oh, the vehicles you know? yeah so up to 33 inch wheels on this thing can drive through nearly three feet of water of course with the standard wrangler lots of aluminum in the body like the door panels the hinges etc uh, power train, very familiar. Base engine is going to be the 3.6 Pentastar, 285 mm -hmm. horsepower. But in 2020, it's not going to be available yet. But? But 2020, you're going to get the Eco Diesel V6 in a Wrangler. I know all of you out there have been just, you Jeep fans have been crying for that, dying to get a diesel yeah. Wrangler. And you're going to be able to get a Gladiator too with the diesel. Neat. Which is matched to an eight speed automatic. The V6 gasoline can have that eight speed auto or a six speed manual. So you can take your pick. Lots of great but stuff over here. But the diesel only comes the with the eight-speed, right? That's is that correct. what you said? Yes. Okay, cool. Eight-speed only for the diesel? The diesel. Diesel? Yeah, so this is uh I think this might be the reveal that stole the show. I know and it leaked a couple times before it was even debuted, but And uh, it's nothing like we didn't expect it's a Wrangler with a bed, but it's yeah. so cool, right? It is really it's like cool. it's finally here. Yeah, and I think so. they're gonna sell a lot of these because yeah. the Wrangler is so popular as it is, and if you make it even more practical, I think people are just gonna go nuts over oh, yeah. it. 
Um, oh, yeah. So do we have any questions about the Jeep? questions. So Sammy is asking, so can you remove the doors and roof and put, put it in the bed? Well, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. Just have to get some, like, cargo straps and stuff like that. Manual transmission. Woo! <laughs> yes, I agree. Everyone loves that. Clint wants to know who makes these crazy cars. Rivia. I think is he maybe referring to Rivia? Maybe, but but FCA is nuts. They are. Like, I really appreciate what FCA does, especially the people at Jeep and Dodge, because they're just having a ton of fun. Like you can tell the people who make these cars are just having a blast. Mm -hmm. And I just want to show you uh, like proof of that. It uh, was over here. Oh no, it's gone. No. No, it's right there. Oh, it's right there. Okay. So Dave Foley <laughs> wants to know: Is the Dave Foley is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada? Did oh, you know that? He's, he's one, one of, of you, my people. You folk. Okay. So he wants to know: Is the Gladiator any wider than a Wrangler? And I would say I, I don't. I don't think it is. I don't think there's any uh, width changes yeah. to the vehicle. But this is what I wanted to show you, and this is just so much fun. So they took a Dodge Challenger Hellcat and they made a Santa sleigh out of it, and this is just the funniest thing ever. Uh, they came out with a commercial. For for this and I don't remember the famous wrestler who was in it but Santa was like really tanned and jacked and he had like <laughs> tribal tattoos. Look what they did to the Hellcat I know isn't that so cute and I wanted to point out that this Santa sleigh has a manual transmission. Of course. Of course it does right? Of course. It's just so funny. It's just stuff like this you know FCA people have fun and I yes. can really appreciate that. There's, they've certainly gotten their mileage out of this this platform, right? For, oh, the, it's for old. The, the LX platform yeah. because it's been around a while, but they keep improving it and they keep coming out with new and exciting vehicles. Yeah, or they keep doing stunts like this yeah. that make people interested, yeah. right? So, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's um. Let's go over to Toyota has a number of vehicles. Toyota. Toyota. Okay. And what happened through Subaru? One of the we did have a question. Is uh, Hyundai close by to here too? Hyundai's in the other building. I oh, think. is it? Okay. I believe so on the West Hall. So let's do it. Toyota is back this way if I recall so join us for a stroll won't you <laughs> let's walk through Subaru here just because their carpet their carpet is always really soft <laughs> They have the softest carpet. You literally like, it's like a Tempur-Pedic mattress I know, or something. it's so like, squishy. It's almost difficult to walk on. I love it. Carpet cast. That's yeah, so we're show. seeing some new Foresters here. The we've Ascent. Driven, we've driven the Forester and uh, we love it. It's a really, really good crossover. We think it's a pretty good contender for next year's uh, car of the year. With the Ascent, do you think they've reached the peak, Jody? <laughs> That's bad. Mm, that is bad. All right, Toyota's back through here. Yeah, and Toyota had some <laughs> uh, pretty interesting reveals this show. Brett Cole Pitts. Boy, that guy Who's sounds that? like an unscrupulous character. He has <laughs> Supra? Oh, the Supra. And he already knows the answer to that. The Supra will actually out. debut at the Detroit Auto Show in January, so it's not too far away. We're finally going to be able to see the production Supra, which they've been teasing for like a million years. I actually think Toyota's in the other building. Is Toyota in the other yeah, building? Yeah, let's, let's head over to All the right. other pavilion. And in the meantime, this is a great chance for you guys to ask us some questions. But uh, you were here with Nissan, right? I was. So maybe you can actually talk a little bit <clears throat> about the uh, the facelifted Murano. You want to wander over there? Sure. And the Maxima. Now I'm going to ask. It's facelifted, but can you tell the difference? That's the question because it's yeah. a pretty minor update. Did it at least get some new tech or anything like that? Um, new features. I know the there are five trims of the Maxima, for instance. The top trim, which is platinum, is going to have 19-inch diamond cut wheels. They've tweaked the interior trim in the Maxima, also the Murano, but there should be like a copper-hued trim in here, which is different. Again, very minor enhancements, different right. colors on the seats. But um, I, I quite liked the Maxima. Um, it didn't really need a lot of changes. It was pretty good as, yeah. as it was. As a larger car in a segment that everybody says the sky is falling. Sedans are going away. Well, they're, no, they're not going away. They're just a contraction yeah. in their popularity, which I'm sure will be short term because eventually we'll reach peak crossover. We have I'm to sure. at some point. Yeah, people don't want to drive what their parents drove, right? Precisely. Yeah. So anyway, there was not too much to talk about in the Nissan booth, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, so let's keep it's walking. A, it's a very similar story, of course, with the Murano. Minor facelift, some new paint colors, um, a couple tweaks inside for trim and color and all that jazz. Gotcha. But all right. um, yeah. Oh, Dave Foley wants to know, when we cover auto shows, do we ever wear pedometers to get our step count? I, I 
turned mine off because it was like wildly inaccurate. Was it now? Yeah. But your iPhone does it, doesn't it? Yes, I'd have to look. It's probably several, it's probably yeah. like a seven or eight mile day so, wandering around. I remember I turned it on when I was at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Mm -hmm. And Frankfurt's um, pavilions are like 20 minutes apart from oh. each other or something like that. You don't go to Frankfurt yeah. in heels, and right, so Jody? I think because you need like orthopedic comfort shoes. Yeah, so I think you the are last walking a lot. Frankfurt, my pedometer was on and I had gotten like 25,000 steps <laughs> that day or something like that. So we're just walking over to the other pavilion right now. It's going to be a minute. It's going to be a, a bit little of a hike. bit. So it's a really good chance to ask us questions. You know, what's our favorite food? <laughs> what non we this is the intermission. This is, let's make this the non-automotive intermission, right? Yeah. Walking from this hall to that hall, ask personal. us about, yes, favorite food. Where did Jody get her pants? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, was that the Salvation Army, Jody? <laughs> or did you make those out of an old comforter? Old curtains. Old curtains, all right. So we're going to... Haida Mari is asking again about the CX-5. So Mazda's over there. They've yep. got the new Mazda 3 sedan and hatchback, which we're going to show you. And in, when we're doing that, yep. we will breeze on through a CX-5 yeah. and give you a look at that. Yeah, it's cool, too, because the CX-5 recently got a bit of updates. And they, yeah. they would have brought it here, too, so that's cool. Oh, it's sunny now. We can we can take the outside route if you Good. want. Good, because it actually, you come to L.A., the city is basically built in the frickin' desert, and it was bucketing down rain today. Yeah, earlier today I've never it was seen pouring. That before. Not that they, you know, they don't need the rain. It's very important here, but... I'm sure it helped with all the fires and stuff yes. like that. Terrible, devastating fires. Yeah. I can't imagine what that that's like. Do we have any questions? We don't. We are wandering though. We do, okay, uh, adaptive driving beams in the United States. I'm not sure what you're referencing. Adaptive driving beams? I wonder, headlamps? I'm not sure, I mean, uh, must be about one of those Nissans. The Murano or the Maxima Refresh. Okay, God, so we, we have, have some, questions. some Mustangs here. The funniest thing about these Mustangs why. is that they, they're they parked in front of a sign that says electric carts <laughs> only. <laughs> Maybe they're the new hybrid model that's coming out. I just think that's hilarious. Oh, the These Shelby. are clearly like, uh, like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Modified mm -hmm. Mustangs. I Custom. think they're by uh, the Galpin people. Oh, yeah. They have a pretty big presence at this show. I think Galpin Ford in, in LA or in the area at least is the largest Ford dealer in the in the world. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. They might be the largest dealer in the world. That I don't know, but no I'm pretty way. sure it's the largest Ford dealer. Well, I know so, they have a whole network of stuff. Like yeah. they have exotic stuff. They have. Oh yeah. Yeah. A bunch of different brands, and they used to do the stuff with MTV, the Pimp My Ride, if I oh remember correctly. That's way back, way back in the day. <laughs> they should so. bring that show back. Do they still have that? I don't think so. I don't so. have cable, so oh I don't know. Oh dear, you'll have to get on the Netflix. What are you watching on Netflix these days? <laughs> I watch YouTube for everything, basically. What's the last movie you saw? Citizen Kane. No, I don't know. I don't even remember. What is the last movie I saw? That's a very good question. Probably Solo. The oh, Han Solo, you, yeah. Do you just not go out for movies I just don't go out for movies. Most huh. of them are bad, I think. Interesting. Ben shakes his head. What's ben is a movie, movie buff. What's the last movie Ben saw? Uh, Queen. I yeah. saw Queen. Yeah, yeah that Queen was... Rhapsody. I loved that movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So, we are finally at the other hall. Oh, we lost connectivity, I think. Okay, we're uh -oh. here. We're Are here. We back? We're good. We're good. We're back. Somebody yeah. asked, "What uh, day does the public show open?" Tomorrow. Well, public show opens tomorrow. Yes, that's okay. correct. That's a very good question because, as journalists covering this, we we never think of that, or at no, least I don't. No, because we only attend the media days, yeah. right? All right. Yeah, so Toyota so should be Hyundai. straight. Oh, well, Hyundai's right here. Let's go to Hyundai. But it's not in the order on the list, Jody. I swear to God, I put Hyundai before Toyota. Corolla Hybrid. No, no, no. Prius scroll down. Guy. Scroll down. See? Oh. How dare you question me, Craig? <laughs> You're fired. You're, You're fired. fired again. You're fired again. That's two times in this live webcast. Oh, my goodness. So, we Palisade. are in the Hyundai booth to see the all-new Hyundai Palisade. 
which is their three row crossover that will do battle with stuff like the Subaru Ascent, the uh, Honda Pilot, mm -hmm. Ford Explorer. All those yeah, fun all those, vehicles. Yeah, all those big crossovers. So here it is. Three rows. It's gonna be the Hyundai, Hyundai brand, the Hyundai brand, the flagship of that. Not talking about Genesis, right. but for Hyundai. So it's it has all be, the tech and yes. everything you can possibly want. And probably a yes. reasonably high price tag, although still be a strong value because that's it what they do. It has to be, yeah, yeah, the segment has to be. It's got room for up to eight people, a bunch of driver assistance tech, all the stuff we, we go on and on about, you know, the emergency braking, automatic high beams. It has to have all that, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I feel like we need to just copy and paste that boilerplate into like everything we do because <laughs> it's pretty much the same for all automakers yeah, these exactly. days. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of tech, what can we expect? Or were there anything, any tech features that kind of stood out to you? Or anything well, they're special calling that none of its competitors offer? They're calling their SmartSense. SmartSense is their suite of driver aids. And uh, that includes some, a couple very nice big displays, of course. It's got a disconnecting all-wheel drive system. But again, none of this is really groundbreaking. Right. Disconnecting all-wheel drive system that's torque vectoring as well. Um, they're billing it as a very premium interior. And I've got to say, it's it's quite nice. I mean, yeah, the Hyundai's kind of is... trying to move up market, so I think this is a good step forward for them. But it, this, I predict this will be a total market failure. Why? Because there's four fewer cup holders in the Subaru Ascent. <laughs> Though, what are people going to do without I don't those know. four cup They're, holders? They're going to be so parched, so thirsty, <laughs> so, so thirsty. dehydrated <laughs> that that's going to be it. That's, I mean, they're going to be like, I can't buy this vehicle. I, I can't need have those a Subaru. four extra I need the Subaru cup because holders. 18,000, 15 million hundred cup holders. Under the hood, let's see. And you have a question. Oh. About, they're asking about design. Asking What's about design. What's the question you have about design? Headlights, I'm looking, looking. What's with the lower headlights? What's with the lower headlights? The trend toward lower headlights. Oh, the, oh, these giant fog lights that they have. That's a good question. And so I think these kind of lights first debuted on the Kona. Yeah, or maybe you could argue, also argue Jeep Cherokee maybe with those thin lights, because these are the main lights, if I remember correctly. And yeah. these are the, like the DRLs, DRLs and turn signals. I okay, think. cool, that's interesting. Um, tell us about what's under the hood. 3.8 liter. Atkinson Diet, pardon me, Atkinson Cycle, V6, latest version of the Hyundai Lambda V6 engine family. Get you 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. So the Atkinson Cycle allows the engine to be a little bit more fuel efficient. It does result in less power output. So opposed to the 3.3 liter V6 they used to have, they bumped the displacement to 3.8 to give you a little bit more torque to make up for the the deficit you would have switching to an Atkinson cycle. So cool. again, nearly 300 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic. It should drive very well. I mean, there's no reason. Right. It shouldn't Has Fuel be completely Economy competent. been announced yet? No. No? Okay. But it should go on sale next year, I think around the middle of next right. year. And that's when we'll find out about pricing and stuff as well. Exactly, because cool. automakers never have that ready they, Not when usually. they de uh, debut the yeah. vehicles. So. Yeah, this year, yeah. interestingly, like Porsche came out with pricing for its 911 when it was debuted, and so I thought, it, I thought that was crazy because that never happens. Um, okay, well, let's keep moving on to Toyota since you were so keen on going <laughs> over there. I love what you do for me, Toyota. <laughs> Just go for the giant upside down sombrero logo. It's at least it's easy to find. Yes. Giant red logo hanging in the sky. Yeah, so Toyota had some pretty interesting uh, product news this LA Auto Show. They came out with uh, a couple interesting updates to their popular sedans. And uh, we're gonna walk over there right now to show you. One of the biggest ones was that the ever popular Toyota Corolla can now be had as a hybrid model. And that's what? the first time that they've ever had a hybrid Corolla. I'm just refreshing the page here. The comments weren't updating for some reason. Sure, if you have any questions, just let us know. We're gonna, we're happy to answer them. So we're walking, we're walking, and here is the new Corolla Hybrid. So it shares its underpinnings with the Prius, of course. Oh, yes. And uh, 
that means it should get over 50 MPG combined. That's major MPG. Which is huge, right? But I have a question for yes. you. Yes. Does Toyota need another hybrid, and another hybrid that's very similar in size to a Prius, right? Yeah, so what- I get that that's their thing, right? But Yeah, so their, their new thing is that they're gonna try to offer consumers as much choice as possible for each uh, model within their family, within the lineup. Yeah. So whereas before they only had one, hot, one Corolla, now they have three. They have the sedan, the hybrid, and the hatchback. And in the future, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a TRD model of the Corolla. <laughs> it's not funny, I swear to God, it's going to happen. And it, uh, it might actually be pretty good. What? What? Uh, a TRD Corolla. They're going to TRD everything. Is there going to be a TRD Prius V? Yes. A TRD Sienna? Oh my God, that would be so cool. <laughs> All right, Mama Jodes. <laughs> I love myself a minivan, <laughs> especially if it was like a sporty minivan. That would be awesome. Um, so this this Corolla Hybrid goes on sale in 2019 in the spring. Uh, it has a 1.8 liter Atkinson cycle engine and total system horsepower is about 121. Whoa. Which isn't gonna, you know, thrill you, but it will get you a lot of MPG, which is what you want when you're buying a so car. So, is there like gonna this. be a TRD Corolla hybrid, Jody? I hope so. Uh huh. I think that would be super cool. Okay. Super cool? Super cool. We have a question unrelated to, to um, Toyota here, but Saul Hernandez Coronado wants to know if there's anything new from Volkswagen at this show. And didn't they have a bus concept, or they was that? They had a cargo, an electric uh, cargo van concept yeah. that came out with uh, an electric bike. Hmm. Yeah. And VW's right over there, yeah. so maybe on our way to the next booth. We can we can visit that. Run through there, but um, Prius all-wheel drive. Another. Yes. Looks like it's on the stand here. So this is it right here. So. So you asked earlier why Toyota needs, like how, how, how is it going to be differentiated from the Prius, which is something they already have, and the answer to that was now the Prius will be available with all-wheel drive. And that's, again, the first time it's ever been offered on this car. And it should get about 50 MPG combined, even though it has uh, two driven axles. Yeah, because they're driving those rear axles with yeah, two electric motors. Exactly, and so that's kind of what makes it unique. And the, the that electric motor kind of disconnects at speeds over 43 miles an hour. Okay. Um, and so that's just for better fuel economy, because you don't want to drive those wheels when no. you're like on the highway or something and you don't need it. So that actually makes a lot of sense. And this is clearly a play, I think, for customers that live in the snow belt, right? That want exactly. an efficient hybrid, maybe Canadian drivers, yeah. where you get a lot of bad weather most of the year. Yeah, and so they said uh, they're expecting the Prius hybrid to be about 25% of its sales. Uh -huh. But in Canada and the snow belt, the take rate is obviously going to be much higher than that. Yeah. yeah. They made it a little bit more attractive, too, the front yeah, end. So then if you swing around there. <laughs> So the Prius used to be like really, really ugly. <laughs> and with this refreshed model, they've given it a new, uh, mostly new headlights and taillights mm -hmm. that kind of tone down the styling a little bit. And uh, what have we got? This should be a similar hybrid system to what you find in the Lexus UX 250H, which didn't yeah. you drive the UX in Sweden? I did drive it in Sweden and wow. uh, it worked really smoothly. I actually preferred the hybrid model of that over the non-hybrid model because it was a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And the system works really well. Oh, Toyota hybrid systems are seamless. They just, yeah. they work and you get great fuel economy. Exactly. And they don't break. Exactly. Right? And so everything this, you need. I'm really curious to drive this all wheel drive uh, Prius and I'll be driving it in December. Okay. They're, go we're, they're taking us to Wisconsin. Oh, there ought to be some in snow. In the middle of the winter. So hopefully there will be some snow that I can test this all wheel drive system in. Do we have so, any questions? Uh, we, Dave Foley wants to know, unrelated to Toyota, has Hyundai had issues with carbon buildup on the back of intake valves like other direct injected engines? And I have no idea. I'm sure they've had some instances of that. I've heard rumblings of problems with carbon buildup, but I don't know of any specific major issue that Hyundai's mm -hmm. having. Of course, with direct injection, you don't have any fuel washing across the back side of the intake valve, so when you have the PCV system sucking the fumes out of the crankcase back into the engine to reburn them, those deposits can form on the, on the valves and never wash off. Gotcha. So if you're running a low grade oil where it tends to break down quickly, there's a lot of vapor that can get sucked back into the engine and cause those deposits. 
fun. I it's like cholesterol new today. in your heart, right? It's carbon buildup. What um, else? Did, oh yeah, we Camry wanted to and show you Avalon. the TRD models. So. Toyota, TRD stands for Toyota Racing Development, and I know I can hear you asking why would they have a TRD version of a Avalon and a Camry, and the answer is again they just want more options for mm -hmm. their consumers, and so I guess people have been asking for a sportier version, and now they have it. Am I the only one that pronounces it turd? Turd. Turd. I think you are the only one, but Aww. we have two examples of them over here. And so I was talking to Jack Hollis at Toyota yesterday, and he basically said that they they want to put a TRD badge on every single model in their lineup, and they're going to start making all-wheel drive available in as many models as possible. Makes sense. So eventually, I'm pretty sure the Avalon and the Camry will get all-wheel drive in the future. So that's that's pretty important news. And I bet it will be an electric all-wheel drive system. I would, yeah. Because then you don't have to rip up the whole under exactly. body to it makes put a, lot a drive of sense. shaft. Yeah. So the TRD models, a lot of people thought they were just going to slap on a body kit and call it a day, but it actually got some pretty legitimate performance upgrades. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What? No oh, it's power like, upgrades. It's 301 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6. From the V6. But they just did the, the suspension, the tires, the brakes, minor improvements in these mm -hmm. areas. New shock absorbers made the springs stiffer, front and rear. I don't know. It just it comes across as phony to me. I get it, it's another option for customers, right? Yeah. But there's no real performance gain, is there? I don't know. I think Maybe a lot I'm too of, cynical. You probably are too <laughs> cynical. Um, I think a lot of these upgrades, most regular drivers wouldn't even notice that much, True. unless you're like really driving the two cars at their yeah. limit. Um, but it also gets like, you know, revised styling. And I think styling is a, is a, it plays a really big role in I think why people are buying. This Camry has a spoiler on the trunk. I don't know if Ben saw this. And the two-tone roof, that looks cool. That looks that cool. That looks legit yeah. cool. So it's they, almost like really, a stormtrooper. They're really starting to embrace that no boring cars thing. Yes. That was a mandate that came down from uh, the mothership essentially. But yes, Yeah, look Russ. at this spoiler on a Camry. When did you ever see that? I think Toyota's up to some pretty interesting stuff these days. Yes, Russ, Ben is running the camera. Hi, Ben. Why don't you, you, you turn around? Oh, he's going to wave. Shall we All go right. to Mazda? We've yes, had quite a few yes. questions about one of their Let's crossovers. Let's go to Mazda. Which one was it? <laughs> so Mazda actually had uh, a really big debut at the show. And maybe we'll go to that first before we go to the CX-5. Yes, they have, yes the, the Mazda 3 yes. debuted. Completely new generation model debuted here in LA. New from the bottom up. And they had two. So they had the sedan and the hatchback. And the hatchback is right up on the stage here. And uh, let me know, what do you think of the styling? I interviewed the designer, one of the designers that worked on it yesterday, and I, I've heard people saying it, it looks too much like the current car. Well, the current car was beautiful, so that's I don't see true. how that's a problem. And there are a lot of very interesting elements to these vehicles. Uh, if you look at the hatch and you look at the sedan, the guy told me, and I asked him several times, but the cars share no exterior body panels. Wow. Yes, that's who does impressive. that? Who does that? It took them, if you notice on the side, it's purely sculptural. There are no hard lines or creases right. or shoulders to the car. The side panels took them two years to design, to get, because they wanted the reflection on the body to yeah. be just right. Look at that too, you can see it kind of reflecting right yes. now. You can see how that is. And it kind of accentuates the curve exactly, of, of that Exactly, the sort panel. of sensual yeah. form to the car. And it's quite striking. It's got a cleanliness, an elegance, a premium look to it. Yeah, that other and Mazda's small cars kind don't. of trying to move their products more up market like that. And I think that by offering designs like this that are just a lot uh, cleaner and not as angular, they kind of achieve that, mm -hmm. right? And I think also they have to move up market because they're a very small automaker, right? Exactly. They don't sell a lot of products. Yeah. Well, they don't sell a lot of volume like Honda does, for exactly. instance. Exactly. So they need to, need to get more money. Yeah, it makes sense. Selling. One interesting thing about the car has a torsion beam rear suspension. 
Yeah, and a lot of people were complaining about that because, you know, even the new Corolla hatchback has, an, has a better rear so suspension. So the Corolla has a more advanced <laughs> suspension than the Mazda 3, but yeah, they, but they justified for that. savings, right? The gentleman up on stage, the Japanese gentleman speaking right now, he's one of the chief engineers on the car, and I sat in a round table with him also yesterday, and he, I asked him, why does it have a torsion beam? And he said that because for up to the limit, it, it drives as well as the multi-link setup they used to have. So for 99% of customers, that's going to be perfectly fine. Right. No one's going to notice unless they're like going nuts on a exactly. track. Exactly. You've yeah. got to be on a track at the limit. That's when the multi-link would have an advantage. Of course, torsion beams have other advantages too. They're cheaper, simpler and they allow you to have more trunk space as well because they're right. kind of a, a lower lower to the ground suspension design. But cool. that's the hatch. Um, like there's a sedan over here. There's a sedan and uh I, I just wanted to talk about engines for a little yeah. bit because there's a whole lot of news in terms of engines for the Mazda 3. So there's going to be four engines available. What? And I'm not sure if North America gets all of them. I'm sorry. Five engines of it. I'm not sure if North America gets all of them, uh, but there's even a diesel that's on offer. Wow. So yeah. there's a, what is there? A 1.5 liter, a two liter, a two and a half liter, a Sky Active X, yeah, and a diesel, yeah. something like so that. Yeah. So that is five. Yeah. And so the new Sky Active X is kind of the big news. Mm -hmm. And so this is Mazda's all new engine, and this is the first car that it's ever appeared in. Wow. And so the way it works, it has spark controlled compression ignition. And to explain how it works is a little bit complicated, Very but the complicated. goal <laughs> the goal of it is to offer better performance with no sacrifice to like fuel economy, mm -hmm. which is what every automaker is kind of trying for. And this is Mazda's way of doing it, you know, without resorting to hybridization. Yes, which is also very expensive. Exactly. But and I question heavy. this, well, that's that true, very heavy with the battery pack and extra motors and stuff. Yeah. But this is a lot of work to make compression, ignition, function. That's untold hours of tweaking and tuning yeah. and research and development. And to put it into uh, an economy car like this, yeah. it's a really big deal. And so yeah. I'm really curious to see how it drives. Uh, and so unfortunately, Mazda hasn't revealed any horsepower or torque numbers or fuel economy yep. yet. But we'll find out, yep. uh, I'm sure, closer to the launch date. Six-speed auto, six-speed manual should be offered. Lots of safety tech, of course. But I've got a question for you, audience. Sedan or hatch? Which one would you rather own? And that I is a almost good like the sedan better. The sedan looks like a little Mazda 6. Yeah, yeah. Which is a beautiful car. Yeah. I actually think I prefer the hatchback. Okay. I just feel like it stands out a little bit more. Um, and especially but, in that like really luminous yes. red color. Yes. That is dope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is dope. That's dope. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of tech, as Craig said. There was one feature that kind of stood out to me, and it's called the driver monitoring system. So it uses infrared sensors and infrared LED lights to kind of monitor your face hmm. and your eyes. Okay. And it tells you if you're getting tired or not. Mm. And it, 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 it pays attention to whether or not you're paying attention. Oh. Yeah. And Don't so, tell me what to do. <laughs> exactly. I do what I want. <laughs> but the system kind of works together with the automatic emergency braking. Mm -hmm. And so if it does sense that you're tired, it will intervene a little bit quicker on the brakes than it normally would. Uh -huh. So that's a kind of a unique feature that uh, I don't think anyone else is really offering right now. Maybe certainly not in the segment, yeah. right? What else? Okay, we have to we have to see the CX-5. Yes, because someone did ask us about the CX-5. asking CX about that. So Ben, if you just want to follow us over here, there's, oh, there a, he there's a CX-5 here. Are we um, still online, Ben? I keep getting a connection interrupted warning here. So the big news with the CX-5 is that it finally gets a turbocharged engine. And people have been asking for it for a long, long time, and they finally delivered. Let's see if this one has it. Oh, they disconnected it. Oh, they oh, won't let no, you no. open it? I was oh, opening there the it fuel is. door. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Jody, that's gonna... a question for you. What? Why do Japanese cars always have a separate little pop uh, lever for the fuel door? Why? What do you mean? You always have to have that little thing you pull to open the fuel oh, door. Instead, to put gas of, in a instead of just poking it? Or like ones that just lock when the vehicle's locked, right? Right. Why? I see they what you always mean. they like always have I don't know. that. That's and an it, interesting it's question. It's a head scratcher for me. Let's see. And 
somebody help me. That's a heavy, heavy hood. All right, lower it down, Ben. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right, we got it. There we go. So there it is, an engine. Turbo power, beautiful crossover. These driver, these are just a delight to drive. Yeah, I've I've always really loved the CX-5, and it was our crossover of the crossover of the year last year. Was it? Yes. Oh. I'm I don't remember. I blocked out specs. the PTSD. Of, no. <laughs> that was a fun time. How dare you? We're having some questions about connection problems. Uh, try refreshing. I had to do that in my browser about two times because oh no. it was something with the connection here at the auto show. So if you are having interruptions, uh, give it a refresh and see if that helps. What else? We're in this in this western hall. Jody, you're gonna have to close that because I or help me. My arms are sore. Can you? I'll lift the hood because okay, the hood. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hot lifted higher. I can't. It gets Ooh, there it is. Down here up yep. the front. There we go. Up uh, by, there, there by the, there, there you go. All right, so I did want to mention the specs for the new 2.5 liter turbo engine in the CX-5. Um, it obviously gets a little bit worse fuel economy because it is huh. turbocharged. Because torque. Exactly, but uh, <clears throat> you'll get 250 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. In the CX-9, that hustles with the I know, engine, and that's right? such a big car, so you can only imagine how it'll feel in a smaller, lighter car like this. Uh, and that's on that's on like premium gas though, of so course. your numbers will suffer a little bit if you use regular gas. Well, you should just use premium gas. Spend a little if bit you more, you get better it, fuel economy. And it's cleaner running, and so you know yeah. it's healthier for turbo engines. Um, what else we have? Audi here, G sure. e Tron GT. Are they? Yes, they're next to Lincoln yeah, over there. They're next door, mm -hmm. so we can head in that direction if um, you want. But did we want to go through the Volkswagen booth very quickly yeah, to see sure. their concept? Yeah, sure. We had a question about uh, a concept that came out. Also, how Nikki much... Nikki Della Place says, get out of Mazda. <laughs> Why? I, <laughs> I don't like know. Mazda. Mazda's great. Maybe he doesn't like Mazda. How awesome are these colors on the GTI as well? Absolutely gorgeous. All right, we got it. So that's actually pretty big news is that now uh, Volkswagen America is offering all these cool colors for the GTI, which they didn't offer at first. So right over here is the concept that came out at the LA Auto Show for Volkswagen. It's the ID Buzz cargo concept, and it's basically an all-electric cargo van that will be used for deliveries and stuff like that. Uh, we're not quite sure if it will come to the U.S. yet. They're kind of considering it, but we haven't heard any confirmation. They will. They are planning on producing it in Europe. Hmm. And, I hope they uh, do. It's cool looking. It is and cool functional. looking, and it makes a lot of sense. And so, it uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the little bicycle that it debuted with. So the idea behind this little electric bicycle is it's kind of a last mile solution for mm. deliveries, and that's okay. kind of the problem, like a logistical issue for you know like the Amazons of the world. And so it has this big cargo compartment, and I wonder if they'll let me open it. Yeah, there it is. And it's all electric. But they kind of go hand in hand. Oh, look at this old Last beetle. Last mile solution, that's cool. Are they letting you open it? Like, it can't be. No. So as you know, the beetle uh, will stop being produced this year. <laughs> and so to commemorate that, they've uh, come out with a limited edition, or final edition beetle. And I mean, we've seen this before. The beetle has kind of died a couple times before, so. I'm seeing if I can find a different uh, Wi-Fi because this one keeps cutting out, so I'm not quite as able to uh, monitor your comments here. Give me a moment, All folks. Right. Um, why don't we go over to Chevy, which is right next door, because we had a question about the new Blazer. Well, that's funny. The comments are popping up, but the video stream is interrupted, so I don't oh, know well. what that means. Let's Sorry, go over. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Let's take a look at the new... What are we checking out? The Blazer. We had a question oh, about yes, the Blazer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Which I don't get. I, what do you mean you don't get it? <laughs> People love crossovers and they're giving us more crossovers. <sighs> so this is the new Blazer right over here. Um, as you can tell, it has very like Camaro-inspired styling, which I think is really cool. Um, and it's, it's not the Blazer you might remember from, you know, the when body we were younger. The body-on-frame truck. Like, like an off-road yeah. focus kind of car. <sighs> But this is, but I don't understand, isn't this in the same 
the same niche as as an Equinox, like size-wise? Like Size-wise, I think it's the same. I think this is just a like a style plate. So like a Murano or an Edge or something, that yeah. design-focused? Yeah. Okay, maybe that makes sense then. It's all about just giving uh, consumers more choice, mm -hmm. right? I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? It looks better in person. When I saw it in photos, I was just like, what? I mean, Why? it just looks like a Camaro crossover, <laughs> yeah. right? Let's see if it's open or not. I th They're not open, if it doesn't so we can't open, just open keep it for pulling you. harder until the handle comes off. Um, yeah. So, so that is uh, the Blazer. We're gonna be driving the new Blazer. I think sometime in January. Oh, is it that soon? I think so. Yeah, it's right. gonna be pretty soon. Did you sign up for that program, Joe? No, I think Sebastian is going Sebastian? on that one. Yeah, let's. Wah. Let's walk over to uh, Audi here. Yeah, this stream keeps getting interrupted. I don't understand. That's okay. I'm trying to give the people the best. Aw. Oh, look at this pupper. Why don't they bring more dogs to the auto they show? Should. They should. They really should bring more dogs. I'd be so happy. Dogs, Remember not last cats. Time? Actually, you missed it. Uh, the New York auto yes, show I was not had there. dogs. And Sammy and I were playing with them, and it was the best day ever. I saw the live stream. You lost your... <laughs> <clears throat> I lost my marbles. All right. So we're here in the Audi booth now, and we're here to find the concept car that debuted and is electric. E-tron up there, eh, perhaps? No, we're looking for the e-tron the e GT. Is this it in the corner? No. No? It's a, it's a sports sedan concept. Why can't I find it? Is it is that it over there? No, that's that's a Genesis. Cue the uh, Benny Hill music, Ben, <laughs> and speed it up, and we'll run around the booth here. I can't like crazy folks. Did it? Is it not here? Did they move it? Maybe it might be on the other side. But this is the only. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Tesla. You want to aggravate people? Just mention Tesla. <laughs> Get a firestorm of. I know, Angry comments. I know. It'd be interesting to see if that Rivian company can actually give Tesla a run for its yeah, money. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's a, fascinating it's a really time. interesting so to time to be an electric automaker. Okay, so we can't find the Audi that we came looking for, which is what really weird. What color is it, Jody? You... I thought it was like a dark gunmetal color. Let's go around this way. I mean, well, well we can tell them about it. Okay, but sure. It's, it's um, previews an electric sports sedan that uh, should come out in 2021. Yes, and uh, it's kind of it kind of previews. They want to do an electric uh, sports sedan, and it shares a platform with the the Porsche Taycan. Okay. Yeah. Obviously so you know it'll be fast. Volkswagen Group family sharing yeah, plan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, it's going to be fast. It, it was actually built by Audi Sport, which are the people oh, okay. who do the R8 and the RS3 and all those really fun oh, cars. The fun stuff. Yeah, so I believe this is the first time they've kind of put their mark on an electric car. So what else? We're going to see 590 horsepower, horsepower, Horses full time all wheel drive, zero to 60, three and a half seconds, 250 miles of range. 250 is kind of weak, but. That's, I'm sure, a pre preliminary figure and will increase once production Probably, comes out. Probably, yeah. Because it's, you, you, want, you would much rather lowball a number like that and exceed expectations and say it's going to get 250 and, oh, it's only 220. Yeah, you'll get uh -oh. in a lot of trouble yes. if you promise People a big number and you can't deliver, right? Marbles, as um, it were. And so they're, they're also developing a super fast charging system, which you can get you at like 200 miles of range in like 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, which is incredible. Do we have any questions? I'm just checking now. All right. Why don't we keep going then, since we can't find that car? Uh, this is actually the last one. Steve that we Ross had. says the feed is keeps interrupting, so it's just yeah. So if if you guys are having issues watching our Facebook Live feed, this video will be uploaded to YouTube probably later today or tomorrow, so you can check it all out there in its uninterrupted yeah. glory. Yeah, so we're sorry if we're yeah. having connectivity issues. Yeah, interrupted again. Yeah. I'm sorry about this, guys, sorry. really. But we have one vehicle left to talk yes, about. Yes, and it's right over here, right so over let's there. go take a look. Um, and on the way, Cadillac developed a new engine, a twin-turbo 4.2-liter V8. 
fun. I had never seen it on display. I think probably because I missed the New York Auto Show. But did you know it's called Blackwing? I, I did not know that. What's until, the reason behind that? I don't know. I, I just saw this here when we were shooting the Lincoln Aviator earlier today. And I love to see engines on display because you get a good idea of yeah. what's actually going on inside that and you don't ever see. And you're a big nerd, so yes, you love that. big nerd. <laughs> engine nerd. But this is their new uh, twin-turbo hot V, V8, and um, five, 550 horsepower, 627 torque. All the great features you expect in a modern engine. So I have a question for you. Yes. What car is this going to go in? They well, haven't announced it yet, I right? I don't think so, but I would maybe CT6, but that's going away, right? Um, that's Aren't a good question. I think it was, yeah. XS? XTS? XTS? Well, I, I don't know. Well, XTS is going away. That's a good question. I don't have an answer. Maybe we can find a Cadillac person. Right. Maybe it'll be their yeah. the, their version of the mid-engine Corvette. Yes, Corvet. yes. <laughs> question for you, sir. We are live Hello. on Facebook right now. Okay. Just had a question about the, the Blackwing V8. I can't answer V8. any questions on camera. Oh. Uh, I'll let you know that I'm not yet. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes, sure. I can. I That's mean, okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Sorry turn your, uh, We'll just I'll speculate. I'll turn the microphone no. <laughs> away. Uh, That's just, okay. Thank you right. so much. Yeah, so if you're live on Facebook, sorry to... Uh, no worries, okay. no worries. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on. This is uh, now the Lincoln booth. They had a really interesting product reveal, and we were actually really impressed by it. I think people have uh, really low expectations for Lincoln. For so long, they've been so disappointing, right? <laughs> yeah, but this is actually a really cool product that I'm kind of excited about. So this yes. is the all-new Lincoln Aviator. Gorgeous. And it's basically a small navigator. Yes, it's like a two-thirds scale navigator. And it looks so good. There's just a subtlety to the design, a tastefulness to the look yeah. of this thing. And Lincoln, they found their position in the market. Yes. Finally, right? And I think this could actually be like a legitimate Range Rover competitor. Yes, I agree completely because let's be honest, the Navigator, she's a big girl. She's a big she's, one. She's, she's a, thick. She's T-H-I-C-C, <laughs> thick. So this is a much more sensible size for a lot of people. Yeah. I think it's something like 10 inches shorter overall than the Navigator. Yeah. So this is like a 2020 model, your Correct. car. So it'll it's gonna come, come out, out next year. Next summer, it should come out. But you get three rows of seats. Um, you can get things like a 28-speaker Revel sound system, which rocks. Cool. You can get 30-way adjustable front seats, again, is optional. Um, the standard engine is going to be a 3-liter twin-turbo V6. It's going to be rated, should be rated at 400 horsepower, 400 torque. That's a lot. Um, yes, it is, That's but a, it gets better. This car's going to be fast. It gets better because they're going to offer a plug-in hybrid version as well. Fun. I think they're going to call that the Grand Touring model. And it's estimated right now to have 50 extra horsepower, so 450 horsepower. But this is the best part, the torque. What is it? Tell them, Joe. 600 pounds feet of torque. 600 pounds feet of torque. That's, it's going to be so fast. It's going to just... That's more torque than, like, an F-150. Yeah. And it's going to be, like, <laughs> right off the line. Kaboom. Instant torque. Instant yeah. torque. So... I wonder if I, we, we can go ask inside if we can, Ben, why don't you just... Uh, well, hold on. Let me. Uh, there was a gentleman I was speaking to earlier. Give me just a moment. I saw him here. Sure. We'll see if we can't pop the door and take a look inside. So while Craig's going to ask some Hello. questions, I'll tell you a little bit more about Actually, it. Actually, perhaps you can help um, me. We were this one we're looking at now is a black label. Doing a Facebook Live now. We wanted to see the interior. Aviator, we and what that means earlier, is just that that's their top line, like I'm fanciest trim okay. level Not that sure. they have. They have some really cool tech. Uh, they have a massive 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. They have a co-pilot that has traffic jam assist and evasive steer assist to help you get out of accidents and stuff like that. You can use your phone as a key. The gentleman you probably heard on the live feed, he's gonna check to see if we can open the door. I mean, we were here shooting earlier today, so we should have just grown up and done it. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, guy. yes. He's talking to another person now. But the interior, cool. if you've seen the cabin of a navigator, it's really beautiful. well done. It's beautifully done, especially. So luxurious. Did you touch on the black label interiors yet? Um, not I really. Away? I explained what black label meant, yeah. but I didn't really talk about what was in the interior. So it's like super premium leather and stuff. Yeah. And, and really, you can pick different themes. I think they're going to have three, maybe four different themes with the aviator. So that's color scheme and trim and stuff. It's very well done if you've seen it in a yeah. navigator or another this, product. This interior is absolutely gorgeous. Ah, and the gentleman has opened it for us. He's Thank opened you very it for much. us. Thank you very much. So all you guys can get a live look at this right now. So they've oh, no, used... Sorry, sorry, I didn't say that we can go on the back. 
Oh, so we can only no. look at it from out here. Okay. That's too bad, um, because the interior is really one of the standout parts of this uh, new aviator for me. I would agree. Yeah. And it has a real name. It does. No not, no more of this MKZ, MKT business. Yes, yes. They've got Nautilus. Is, yeah. MKX went to Nautilus. Aviator's coming back. Navigator's You know what? And I saw an MKT the other day. It's like an airport limo. It's oh, like yeah. the, the, tr the car of choice for they airport make limos. A, a, trim, a trim level town car. It's like extended a little bit. It and is has so damn. I'm ugly. The MKT is honestly one of the ugliest cars ever made. Ever made? Ever made. That's that is a, a hill severe. I will die on. That is okay? <laughs> and so it is Dode's really... Dode's last stand. <laughs> so it's really impressive to me that Lincoln has come so far yes. in such a short time. Well, they've. I think they finally realized they need a luxury brand. It needs to be respectable. You can make a lot of money selling luxury exactly. cars. And to compete, you've got to be there. you got to bring your yeah. A game. And they're doing that. And quite least, honestly, I, mean, I think the these interiors are a lot nicer than what Cadillac is offering right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's and just um, across the way. It even I kind of prefer this to like a BMW interior as well. It's simple and, and you but don't it's have like, to think about it's it. It's luxurious. And, like yeah. it feels really expensive. Yes. Yeah. Let's check out the navigator that we can actually get in. Sure. And you can see because this one yeah. should be the um, I forget the name of the theme, but it should have the black label treatment. So this will give you just a little idea of some of what they've they've done. Um, oh, so so this interior it this has this navigator. gorgeous yeah. So it has this gorgeous uh, like blue leather, which I love. Yeah, and I really hope that they'll offer that on the new uh, Aviator. So I'm trying to let me wander around because there are several themes that they're offering: black label, blah blah blah, bum 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 bum. It's, I'm trying to remember, Yacht Club. This is the Yacht, yacht Club, Club theme, theme, so very nautical theme to it. I love the, the dashboard layout and some of the detailing they've done. I also very... drove it and it is surprisingly fast yeah. for such a huge heavy car. Because it's got 450 horsepower, I want to say, 510 yeah. torque. It Actually, definitely... we shot a review of it that should be nearly done. Cool. So a video will be coming out very soon, so check that out. Awesome. But it definitely doesn't feel as big and heavy as it actually is, which is impressive. And when I was putting that review together, I talked to one of their product guys on the phone. And um, so aluminum body work, like the F-150, which saved hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But they, the vehicle's only a few hundred pounds lighter than the previous generation because with the weight savings, they reinvested a lot of that in new features and technology to make it more luxurious. Right. Makes a lot so, of sense. Anyway, cool. that's a little, imagine this at two-thirds scale, and that's the aviator. <laughs> and then you got the aviator. With sort of a, a sloping top to it, right? Because yeah. the aviator roof is just like a little drooping. Which drooping? Looks, not drooping. You could have used a better description. What would you describe it word? as? It's not drooping. It's, it's windswept. Yes. Windswept. That's more accurate, for sure. Um, All right, so that's about so everything that's we about, had on the list. Yeah. But, I wanted to put you on the spot, Jody, okay. and ask you the following question. Sure. What is your pick of the show? Um, What's your I favorite think reveal? My favorite thing that came out at this show has got to be those Rivian cars. Yeah. So that truck and that SUV from Rivian, which was that electric automaker, I mm. think that can really shake up the segment because right now there's not there's no electric pickups right now so if they're kind of the first to market with an electric pickup truck i think that would be huge that would be very and an suv as well and they're capable off-road and they look really really cool um and so i'm really interested to see kind of where that goes other than that, I really like the Kia Soul because that's, that's Soul a car cool. I could like picture that's myself That's something you, could, you would be willing to buy and drive. Yeah. There are dogs that are being petted, <gasps> and I'm jealous. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go pet the doggos. Oh and my! We'll, we'll I shouldn't have brought video. this up. I shouldn't have brought we'll this up. We'll end the video up. by All by right. petting the dogs. Craig, what's your favorite? My pick is much more conventional. I would go with the Aviator just because it's my super nice. My favorite car at the show is this dog. <laughs> 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 What's your name, buddy? Who's this? Who's this is Niles. Niles? Niles. What's Hi, Niles. Niles. Uh, Niles is an explosive detection canine. Wow. What a good boy. Yes. Can we pet him or no? Certainly. Oh. Oh. Hey, Niles. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Turn Do to the camera, like the buddy. LA Auto Show? <laughs> He's like, get away from me, lady. Oh, I bet he's getting all sorts of attention. He is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hi, you are so cute. Who's a good boy? He's like, get away from me, I know. lady. He's like, Unless I've got lives snacks. to save. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to our live webcast from the LA Auto Show. Yes, thank you for watching on Facebook again. If there were connectivity issues, which I know there were, we're you can sorry. check this out. We're sorry. Check this out on YouTube. Very shortly we'll have that up so you can watch it in its uninterrupted entirety. Mm -hmm. Or you can watch a smaller part of it if you get sick of us. Which Either you way. probably did. I'm sick of this, so <laughs> goodbye, Jody. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, guys. Bye. <laughs> he was he went to pet him, he's like, no, no. Look, he's getting snacks right now. Oh, no wonder. Oh, that's why. The only way to a Lambrador's heart is through is jowls. Smackles. Smackles.